Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Ladybug Tools Sky Mask Component to evaluate shading strategies. So the first thing we want to do is actually drop that component in the canvas. And I already have a context um, connected to a building that I'm evaluating. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn the preview off because it um, blocks the geometry that you're looking at. And I'm going to switch to top view so we can visualize it. So the context buildings are actually just these three buildings. And I have a, uh, a design building in the center here, which is located at 00. zero. So if I turn my sky dome back on, and zoom out, you'll see right now there's nothing going on here. And the default 00, zero happens right over the design building. So I'll connect my context to context. And now you can see a shading happening. And what this is telling us is at 00, zero uh, you'll see shading from your context as such. Um, we can scale this dome right now and set to 100 meters or it's a uh, hundred times the unit measurement so if we change the scale to two or we might want to make it smaller so let's do a slider that goes from zero dot dot point 99 and this way we can scale it smaller or larger that didn't quite work. Let's do it again, 0.99, and connect that to scale. So now we can make it bigger or larger, and we can see, visualize how that shading is occurring. Okay. I can also see that my center point isn't quite in the center, so I can specify a center point and in, in Grasshopper, I'll create a point parameter that I will right click and set one point. It might be in perspective view. Here we go, there's that point. I'll select that point and connect it to my center. And you can use the gumball Let's go back to the top. You can use the gumball to kind of move that around if it doesn't quite look right yet. Okay. Um, so once we have the center and the scale all set, actually, I might actually like to move that point to the edge. Actually, let's move to the south. So if you've moved your point to the south facade, Say you want to evaluate an overhang. So the first thing you need to do is determine the orientation. So you would connect a slider that goes from 0 to 360 to the orientation. And we want to set that to 180. Let's just type it in. So now that I've set it to 180, I can see that there's actually no shading on the south end of my building. So I want to design some overhangs and see what the shading would be like for an overhang um, that uh, is of a certain distance. So this input takes in a number between 0 and 90 that sets the angle between the center point and the edge of your uh, horizontal projection. So I'm going to create a slider that goes from 0 to 90. And once I do that, I can see it's not going to do much, but as you increase the distance, you can see the shading impact on the south end based on the depth of your overhang or the angle from the edge to the center point. 
You can do the same thing for a left or right fin projection. So if you wanted to do vertical shading instead of horizontal shading. So this takes an input of zero uh, from 0 to 180, a slider from 0 to 180. So if we add that and we start rotating, if we were to add a fin depth of a certain amount, we can calculate what that distance is. And do the same thing for the right. And all of a sudden, we're able to shade many hours of the day from uh, at the southern um, orientation. Um, as these, the I'm actually going to disconnect some of these so we can see. Oops, I want to keep the overhang projection. You can see it's quite fragmented in its view. If you change the density, you can, the default is set to one, and you can do um, a smoother density. So say we increased it to three. We can smooth out how that shading context looks instead of it being so fragmented. And if these buildings moved, it would kind of re-automatically re-engage that shading profile and help you calculate what depth your shading element should be given the context um, around your building. All right, well, that's all I had to show you in this video. Thank you so much for watching.